All right. So I guess we'll go ahead and get started and hopefully Todd will jump on soon. Um, Jonas, I, we haven't met in, in person or in, vi in video, but um, um, basically everyone here, we have ships with uh, Cyclops Marine. We have Charles Swanson with Velocitech and Jonas Witt with Sail Nord. Um, so the idea here was just get together with everyone and start talking about, um, you know, what's going on with the electronic side of things and the, um, you know, technology, because it's changed a lot over the last few years. And, you know, really even the last year, a lot of things have, have happened and um, the coaches are using the technology a lot more, which is great. And, you know, I think with this time where we're kind of trying to figure out what's going on, um, we, you know, I think it's a good opportunity for people to, you know, start to dial in the, the technology that works for them because, you know, a lot of times they're not going to be able to sail against other people or it'll be smaller groups. So I think with all of your products, it's going to be very advantageous for sailors to be able to, you know, jump on and get the right instruments, have the time to dial them in, and then, uh, you know, go do some testing and, and check it out. And so when we get start to build into re regular regattas, whether they're big or small, you know, we're going to be small to begin with. We're going to then work our way, you know, into a bigger, you know, as we get to bigger fleets, it, it, people can have the jump on it. So um, what I'll do here is I'll just um, have each of you introduce yourself real quick and just a, um, a quick thing about your company. And then we'll, we'll get dig a little deeper as we go. Um, so why don't we start off with, um, Chips. Uh, this is Ian Howarth, who's with Cyclops Marine, and he goes by Chips. So go ahead and introduce yourself and what, what you have going on. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Chips Howarth. I'm the C CEO of the company Cyclops Marine. Um, uh, uh, really briefly about me, I've, I've been a previous director of a, a number of marine companies, uh, but I'm also a sailor. I've uh, coached a 470 Olympic team, uh, and I was a dinghy racer. I won five world titles as a, as a dinghy sailor. Uh, but uh, like the rest of us, we had to pay the mortgage. So then I got a proper job. Uh, and uh, so, so talking about Cyclops Marine, um, this is a, a new company. It's, about, well, it's 18 months old. Uh, it's a British uh, technology business. Uh, and what we've done is developed a range of sort of new generation load sensors. And it's bringing sensing load or in, in a, a retention measuring uh, uh, to the masses uh, to be able to do it in real time. Uh, uh, with devices that are simple to fit uh, and work wire wirelessly communicating to uh, your boat instruments or to, uh, to a, a phone app. Great, perfect. Uh, Charles Swanson is with Velocitech and I'll let you um, talk about um, your company. Yep, and your Charles role. Swanson here with Velocitech. Um, we make instruments for sailing and stand-up paddleboarding. Um, we've got four products in the line right now. The Pro Start is the, the classic time and distance start line aid. Uh, we've got the Speed Puck, which is a small GPS speedometer. It's round, it's black, looks like a puck. Um, speedo and data logging is, uh, is what you get out of that one. And then we've got the Prism, which is a solid state D compass. It's got 29 millimeter digits for, uh, for all your Olympic sailing needs and, and classes where they restrict uh, digit sizes. And then we've got the Mackay, which is a GPS for stand-up paddleboarding and great for social distancing. Great. All right. That's us. Thanks. And Jonas, Jonas Witt is with um, Sail Nord, um, and you call it Norge Analytics too, I believe, right? There we go. Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, so I'm, I'm much more of a software developer than a pro sailor. Um, but uh, I founded this company uh, about one and a half years ago. And uh, we got started uh, building software to run video debriefings and then later on analytics for uh, pro sailing teams. At first in the context of uh, the TP-52s, but we quickly expanded and it's by now pretty much used by anyone from uh, America's Cup to uh, Olympic dinghy sailors and also recreational sailors. Um, so um, that's pretty cool. And you basically load your data into it. Um, um, so we do support, you know, Velocitech data. Uh, we've loaded some uh, data from the Cyclops uh, fittings in here. Uh, so you can look at all of that, build, uh, you know, 
databases and insights uh, out of out of all that data you collect on the water um, in in short yeah okay and then we have Todd Wilson from Bacaros here Todd we're just doing introductions uh, about you and your company and and just you know kind of the, the basics and then we'll move into more more uh, a little later yeah, sounds great. Yeah, Vicaros, we're uh, another uh, small electronic startup in the sailing world, and we, our premier product is the Atlas, which is a contained uh, single device for both providing GPS data and uh, magnetic heading data, um, all on a customizable screen. Awesome, perfect. So, um, you know, I, I think the the biggest thing here, you know, that with I talked about my intro is is one. These are also these are all great instruments, but you know, I think the, the biggest thing about kind of the group is you guys can all work together and have worked together to be able to, you know, take advantage of what's going on. And I think that's what's pretty cool about it. And that's what we are working on is, you know, if we can get all of you guys to, um, you know, we get all, you know, the whole sailing community to get all the different tools and put them together. I think that's pretty important. Um, so, um, you know, I've, I think the biggest thing is like Sail Norge was kind of one, in my opinion, kind of one of the fi final pieces that I heard about where, you know, they can take the data and put it into software and then overlay it with video um, and kind of, you know, get all that information. So um, maybe Jonas, you can kind of tell us what data you need, um, how it works and what, you know, you have gotten from, you know, the different things all the way up to a TP52. I think you can talk about like what a 52 would have, but then also what you could get out of like a J70, it's gonna have a lot more minimal, but these other instruments can get that data for you. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's uh, just a huge range of the amount of data available from whether you're looking at a bigger yacht, right? And these will have fairly expensive race processors on them and all sorts of sensors connected and we might typically get like a, um, an expedition log file out of that at the end of the day, All right? That's, that's what a lot of people use. Uh, and that's really sort of the, the bigger boat area. And what we're seeing in a lot of the smaller boats is really cool. You've got these self-contained devices that are much less expensive and much easier to use because to be honest, uh, putting a Velocitech or uh, an Atlas on your boat is much simpler than setting up Expedition. Um, I, I can tell you that. So um, that opens uh, data collection up to uh, just a totally different area of sailors. Um, and we can use all of that, however, right? We've got basic position data from all these sensors. Um, and even with the, uh, with the self-contained ones or just the possibility to record data on your smartphone, uh, I think it's gonna be really nice right now and also in the future to be able to connect more sensors in a way that uh, I would, you know, that, that you would find modern. So you would use maybe Bluetooth or ANT plus to connect more sensors to your system, right? And you've, you've got a, a smart fitting for you to put on your force day and suddenly you've got so much more data out of it without having to put a, a big massive uh, race processor on your, on your small boat. Right, that, that might not work. Um, on our side, we try to be, as I said, pretty flexible. We take all kinds of data. I think it's pretty important also to be aware that sometimes you need a little bit around just the, the boat's performance data. You might need information on where was your start line, right? That gets pinged on a lot of devices or maybe the coach will just ping the start line, write down the coordinates on a, on a piece of paper on his phone you can still use this at the end of the day to do some analysis who was closest to the start line at the gun or maybe even over, right? Do some analysis on that. Do automated uh, lap timings if you, if you write down the position of your, uh, of your top mark or you have a mark bot like you mentioned earlier and you just load it into the system automatically. So it's, what we find is it's really a very individual matter of the, the, the team and the tech that you've got to just become a little familiar with loading all of that data and what you need for that and to get a nice system up and running. But we do support uh, all sorts of combinations there. Uh, and the more data you got, the better. And I think all the other guys on the call are working hard uh, making that possible. And we'll, we'll take what we get uh, and, and do some analytics uh, with it. 
So what's the best uh, format for you to receive to, to, to then work with your program? Um, I mean, the specific formats are, there are different types, but it doesn't really matter because at the heart of it, it's all a, a time series data, right? It could be at recorded once per second at one hertz, or some people go at five or 10 hertz uh, on, the, on the pro boats. But if you have a simple time series of your boat's position at you know, one hertz, one, one data point per second, you can already tell quite a bit. If you've got a faster boat, you might need a, a bit of more data to, to make sense of, let's say, maneuvers and how exactly you gain and lose uh, uh, VMG throughout that maneuver. Uh, but that's the basic format of all the data we take. It's, it's data over time. And uh, CSV is an incredibly versatile and common format in one way or another. Or GPX files get exported from anything down to your Garmin wristwatch. Right? Or it's, it's vendor-specific formats, like f coming from a Velocitech device. You'll get a, a certain type of file, but that loads just as well. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, you know, this is one thing I want to make sure everyone knows. Um, this is, we're all in a conversation here. So does anyone have any, any questions for Jonas right now of the group? There's something Ed, something Ed said, uh, uh, you know, how would this apply to a J70 campaign? Um, are you working on projects that sort of size? Um, well, there's some, you know, the areas that we're most busy in is sort of the bigger keelboats, 52s, 44s and that, uh, some swans and some, some 40s. Uh, and a lot of the Olympic classes uh, right now working with uh, some of the, the national teams in that area. Um, and I guess sort of, it, it's been used for J70s for sure, right? Uh, I think it's, it's always a matter of uh, how do you get the data and what are the specifics of how do people train? Is it more recreational where you end up sailing with 20 guys each weekend? Uh, right, then your data acquisition probably looks a bit different than it's you and one other guy at the Olympic training camp, right, where you've got a coach and all sorts of devices maybe provided for you. Um, but the, the basics of it are not really different whether you're analyzing J70 data. And I guess most of the people have used it on a J70 so far had a, a velocity tech on that. Well, I guess that that works great. Yeah, the one thing we're trying to do, and you know, this is new to us uh, as well, um, just from talking to some of the coaches, I know Richard Clark uses um, Sail Norge and he's been doing some Melgus 24 coaching. Um, I'm not positive if Dave Ullman does or not, but yeah, I know he does something similar. Um, so, you know, they are using them for about any campaign and I think that's good. And the goal we're trying to do, and we're doing some testing right now with Vanguard 15s, where we're just throwing um, some instruments in because they're not supposed to be able to look at them. And so we have kind of a combination of Vicaros and, and Velocitech, and we even have some old uh, Nova sales that we've just thrown in there um, to get data. Um, uh, so, you know, really we're just create, trying to create black boxes because they're not allowed to use them. Um, but the goal is to, you know, create the format which Sail Norge does to get all the data to do really, really good debriefs. And, um, you know, the only reason why we're doing the Vanguard 15s, not the only reason, but the reason why we're doing the Vanguard 15s is because we have them here. Uh, we had 14 boats this weekend. We didn't have that many devices, um, but we had, you know, five or so devices that we'll, we'll get the data from, and then we'll start with that. And so we had this weekend, and we'll have another one next weekend. And then we're working on a J70 series that'll be in Houston um, start date, we're not sure, it's based on participation, but could be um, uh, basically July, August, September, October, November, um, and most likely October, October on will be the biggest, but where we can start to do this, it'll be fully coached event using all the data we can. And so, um, you know, that kind of leads me into um, chips with, with um, with the load cell side of things, you know, there were some couple teams trying to use a different one, and I know they didn't have actually the the turn the turnbuckle style, which is needed for a four stay. 
Um, but one of the things we're trying, we're planning on doing is using at least a couple of his product because on a J70, that can be pretty cool data and some things we've already learned by just having some little bit of data here and there, it can help everyone, even if you can't use it while racing in a, in a real regatta, um, you can learn from it to create your settings to then as a sailmaker, someone can share share with their sail makers or you know as an instrument company you could use it to share with your clients that you know this is what you go to so um chips why don't you talk to us about um your products yeah thanks uh, i think um uh, so, so the, the product ted was talking about here is, uh, is effectively the, uh, the the body of a bottle screw you take your dumb bottle screw off which on a j70 uh, i would recommend that being your four stay one and you wind you wind this in place, uh, and in the in the cassette body here, we uh, effectively are, are measuring the loading uh, uh, in the in the four stay. We then the clever part of this, uh, and and what our technology t technology experts have uh, done is, we then digitize that, convert it into Bluetooth, and 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 uh, and send it off to uh, either your phone or it can go to the uh, to the instruments. We do that in two ways. It either goes through a gateway or, or to the, um, I mean, something we want to work out with these guys uh, on the Atlas and the Velo Velocitec is uh, that it should be able to read this Bluetooth directly. And I think the way the sailors are going to use this is in three different ways. I think the number one way is, first off, before you leave the dock and you're just getting your static settings uh, correct, so you're getting the, the tension right on your on your shrouds and forestay uh, for the wind condition, this is going to give you an analytical and, and also an extremely accurate rig load. So the tradition of using a rig tension meter, which is a bent bit of metal from like 1920s technology, this is bringing that to the 21st century to give you a proper super accurate digital load. So I think that's the first way you'll use it. You'll get your accurate static, what, we, what you may want to call your static or your dockside settings and you get your light, medium, heavy air settings. I think the second place this will get used, and this is kind of the, the new, uh, kind, of, kind of the new journey for I think people racing, is you'll then be able to see your loading dynamically. So while you're racing, when you're inducing main sheet load, and, uh, and backstay load, you're gonna start seeing your forestay changing. So you're gonna see a live dynamic load while you're racing. Rather than your backstay, there might be some old black tape that you put there last season and you'll pull it to that black tape again. You're gonna start getting some proper numbers. And, uh, and I think seeing the proper analytics and that's gonna then allow the sail maker to work with you on proper numbers. So you'll, you'll be able to repeat what the sail maker recommends you should be hitting. So yeah, I think one of our mantras of this product is it will add value to the other things you're buying. You're buying a suit of sales. You're going to get more value from those sales because using this and then following the sale maker's guide, you're going to be setting them up more accurately, more consistently, but you're going to hit those faster settings more regularly. And I think that's where our sales working with the, uh, the I'm looking on the screen, working with Charles and Todd's company is going to be really exciting to make sure that that rig load is, is, is an option on their displays. So as you come around that lured mark and you're wailing on the backstay and the, and the main sheet tension, you're, you're aiming at a number. And then I think the third and the final element is really where Jonas comes in, is where at the end of the racing, you gather all that data back up together and, and you can see what, what worked and what didn't. And you're going to have the analytics to be able to go back and review it uh, in, in the uh, SailNord uh, software. You're going to be able to see the impact of varying your loads on your shrouds and on your on your um, uh, and on the dynamic controls you've got while you're sailing. Which, if we come back to the J70, that's primarily going to be your your main sheet tension and your backstay. That dynamic adjustments that you're likely to be doing during the race. And I think what these devices are doing is it's, it's giving you that real time live load right while you're racing, and then also feeding into the uh, the sail node system. So after racing. You, think, yeah, you can then analyze it and go, oh, yeah, we, you know, we did put too much backstay on that beat and we didn't feel the wind softening and, you know, our numbers and our analytics have uh, uh, sort of backed that sort of research up. So I think it's the three elements you're going to get out of this, none of which people have really got right now. I mean, maybe they've got a poor man's version statically using existing rig tension gauges uh, to, to a, a lot poorer accuracy. Uh, but other than that, everything else now is really new and exciting technology. Yeah, and I think with what you're saying is also, you know, with your bottle screw on the front, you also make a um, small load cell that could literally be hooked up to your um, um, backstay and actually your main sheet if you wanted to. Absolutely, um, Very yeah, easily. So, um, yeah. You know. 
Yeah, I, I, I wasn't sure. That goes time with, to I, I, yeah. yeah. This, this is our five-ton one. So we have a smaller two-ton one, which, uh, uh, to give you an idea, we've sold out of those ones. The, the, the next batch don't come in for a few weeks, so this is going well. So, so if you think of this as, as, as the, the way of measuring the, the standing rigging, this is to measure any of the soft line loads. Uh, this was developed with uh, the uh, INEOS Team UK, America's Cup uh, Challenge. And what they really challenged us on was to make this the smallest in dimension and the lightest and strongest it could possibly be. So these are all made out of titanium. Uh, and what we're doing is just in this, this tiny little distance here, we're able to measure the strain or the load go going through this device. And in this small compartment, you can see how thin it is, that's my finger. In this small compartment here, we're able to then digitize it and communicate it. And, and Ed, you're absolutely right on things like main sheets, kite sheets. I think maybe not relevant for a, um, uh, a J70, but uh, um, code zero loading. Uh, we, were, we were on a trimaran this weekend. Uh, uh, working on the main sheet, and you know we're learning something every day about the that you know we, we, when we're pulling load onto things, it's really interesting to see how the boat loads up. Since you dig a, a lured hull in a trimaran, it's, it's really interesting to see what happens to the main sheet load uh, when you do that. So we're learning all sorts of things. But again, this can all then go to your phone or to your electronics, and then at the end of the race, be um, um, uh, be analysed through a sail node system uh, for some uh, analysis data. Uh, we've also got some boats building these actually into the sails, so this can be a, a head fitting or a tack fitting to give you a, a sail load uh, measurement as well. Th this has almost got unlimited. Uh, we've even got uh, international moths when I use them on the vangs. You know, they, they, this is a dinghy product as well in some ways. All right, who has any questions for uh, Chips on that one? So I have a couple. Um, so one is, does do those two products already have the ability to store data? Um, or are you looking for one of these partnerships to, to manage that for you? Now, th these don't store data, but what they do, they communicate the signal to one of our gateways that stores the, the data. Got so it. when it, uh, and, um, but, but what it could do, if, you, if your device, so the, the two options are, we link your electronics to our gateway. So our gate, gateway is a small separate box that receives the Bluetooth signal. Uh, and we can link that into your electronics. So, so it, A, gives a, the storage of the data, but more than anything is, is communicating that real-time load. The other option with, your, with, with either of your uh, technologies is if it can receive a Bluetooth signal, it can at least be uh, delivering the real-time load. You may lose the, uh, the, um, the, the storage capability, or that would have to be done inside your processor at that point. Yeah, ours, we, we have a, like a time series collection point. So if there are any, it, it, it's like, here's a timestamp, here's a, a type of message, and it could be anything. And it's what we've been working on. And so it'd be potential uh, that we could just add your data in with that. And so then when people download it from our app, that it would just all be together. Um, and that'd be perfect for Sail Nord. Um, so that led up to my, my next question is, do you guys have uh, your, your whole Bluetooth um, protocol already documented and, and ready to be used? Are you still developing that? No, no, so it's all ready, so we can share that with you. That'd be great, fantastic. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so your devices receive a Bluetooth signal that they can yeah, listen so to? Yeah, so to use the, the Bluetooth parlance correctly, it can be both a Bluetooth peripheral or a central, and it can do both those roles simultaneously. Um, so we should be able to, to support you. Fantastic, well, let's, let's get in contact after this uh, yeah, we'll talk. This live show. <laughs> yeah. Sounds great. Chips, what's the frequency <laughs> for the data? Um, can, can I get my technical guy to let you know that? That's, that's, uh, I've, I've only been in the job four months, so that, that I, I don't know is the quick answer. Okay, and, and the, uh, your gateway, uh, is that NEMA 2000? Yeah, um, NEMA 2000, yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you just clarify when you say frequencies, the the the, the, the you mean the, the regularity, the hertz of the uh, of the signal? Uh, it's yeah. one hertz. Well, it's, it's what, and that's something we can actually in our devices we can adjust. We've just decided. That, so our challenge is to make these as small as possible, so they're battery operated to to drive the Bluetooth uh, 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 signal. And um, so we tr we're really trying to balance between the frequency versus the the longevity of the battery because this thing is constantly transmitting. This isn't something where you've got to particularly pair the device. It's constantly transmitting. And uh, so we've gone with we're at one hertz, which we think is about right. Uh, and I think as Jonas said, maybe on really fast boats, and we're talking to some um, Olympic 
projects where you know maybe we might adjust this to be a a, a, a higher frequency um but then maybe in, on some we, we're working on some projects where it's more a safety device where it could possibly uh, reduce the frequency so that's something we can actually adjust as well but our standard is what one hertz or one, one at per one, second yeah. at one hertz what kind of longevity are you getting uh, for battery uh, out of this device we get six months and there's a there's a, a simple uh, battery um uh, uh, uh compartment there you can see this the the screws for that so you can just change them yourself they're uh double a batteries so that's uh, tri triple a batteries so that's a really easy change um so uh that's a one hertz this is slightly different this is quite this is a bit more sophisticated but to keep this so small to make that america's cup demand this only has a battery life of around about 200 hours but what we have got is an, uh, an on off switch and also an ability to set it running to, so we can set it up for different time intervals so we can have this running depending on how you use the uh, the start button you can have it run just say for an hour or four hours or eight hours so what we envisage happening again on a say J70 backstay, as you're sailing out to start in the morning, you'd set it up for the eight hour day. And then, you know, at the end of racing, when you just want to hit the bar or the protest room, you'd have to remember to turn your devices off. They'll just automatically close themselves down. So we reckon you'll get about 25 days of racing again before you just got to change it for a, a battery you can buy in a, it's a, a standard button battery. Um, does anyone have any other questions? So, I guess I'm going to have a question back to Sail Norge on, uh, you know, how have you, you know, what, from using his device, how has it, you know, been valuable to your customers? Um, well, so specifically with regards to the to the Cyclops devices, uh, we're at the beginning of exploring these possibilities together. We've had a few chats. Uh, I've got some sample data here uh, where it's been used on a force day of a J111, uh, I believe. Um, but, you know, to me, what, what they're obviously doing is having force day data is, is really valuable, right? All the pro teams and the bigger boats are doing it, uh, but they're doing it at a significant expense. And with having to wire up these sensors to their data buses and so on. And you're going to drill through the, the deck, I believe. So that's, that's quite an effort to get it going, but these teams have done it because it's so valuable to them. If you can get that at a much cheaper price and the loading the data into our system is just the same, then it just becomes affordable to so many more people. And that to me is the key here really. And um, specifically with how we're going to get data from, uh, from the Cyclops devices. Um, so if it feeds into uh, NEMA 2000, that's great. We've got a, a bunch of NEMA 2000 recorders where we can load their data and that works. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty curious about the um, possibility to hook it up to a different device that is already, you know, tailored to receive and display data and store it to be analyzed at the end of the day, um, like a Velocitech or an Atlas. I think that's going to be really um, make this work going from the Cyclops device to our software. Um, and I, I think it's also going to be more stable than um, I think there's been attempts to do this with, with smartphones, right? But there are certain limitations put in place by the, the smartphone vendors as to what you can do and what you cannot do. And you've got to leave the phone running to keep it connected to that, uh, to that sensor. So that, and, and maybe people don't want to expose their phones to salt water and so on. So I think having, you know, a rugged device that maintains a stable connection to the sensors is going to be that much more useful to people and, and will be more reliable uh, on every race day or training day that they go out. Yeah, it sounds like there's some pretty smart things with the battery, you know, life, you know, setting up the battery patterns and that type of thing. So you don't just leave it on and that type of thing. Um, because we know we get busy getting off the water and you, you walk away. And I think that's pretty important. Um, and then we can always ask questions. We talk about it later. Um, Charles, you want to jump in here and talk about you know, what you have going on as well as, you know, how I know you've worked with Sail Norge. Um, 
and you know kind of what your thoughts are with what Cyclops has as well. I I I'd love to have a, a device that integrates with a the load cell. Um, four stay loads are intent are, are very valuable as we all know. Um, how that how that's going to work with uh, within the the context of you know J70s, which may not allow it uh, during racing. Um, you know, we'll we'll just have to log data, put it in the background, and you know, bring it forward after the fact. Um, what uh, what else? What what we're working on? Um, you know, more more start line boxes. Uh, just trying to trying to give you the best time and distance possible. Um, help people get the most out of their time on the water. That's that's kind of that's our shtick. Um, yep. I don't I don't really have any questions for Chips at the moment. It, he, he did a pretty nice job giving us the rundown. So I'll I'll seed my time. Okay, is there anyone else you anything else you want to say about Boss Tech or anything new products coming out or working on things or oh we're we're always working on things um not not too much we can say at the moment um we've got uh yeah we've, we've got we've got some stuff in the in the works um you know look for something june ish late june from us so that's that's about all I'll say at the moment. All right, great. Well, we know you're already working with. You know, your data is able to be dumped into the Sail Norge application, which is great. Oh yeah. Um, we were we've been doing that here. Um, I think that's valuable, um, which is great. So um, um, yeah, I think um, Todd, you want to let us know you've had the Atlas um, for what are we going on now? A couple of years now. No. You want to let um, us know any update? Like a year. And... Um, I've been working on it. For you did it too, really <laughs> Yeah. So one one has one with prototypes. Um, and uh, but yeah. So the Atlas is uh is we're we've been late on it, but we've got this this pretty significant update coming to the firmware that we've been working on for some time now. We've been we've got some new guys in the company who are doing an awesome job. Um, so we're really excited about that. And it's, it's mostly related to the things we're talking about. It's, you know, the ability to, to record all that data um, at a really high level of fidelity. So we, um, we do um, our motion solution in Atlas at 18 Hertz. We downsample that to 10 Hertz for the log. And then we, we write that in and we can record about 300 hours of telemetry that way. Um, and then it's, uh, it's not just the GPS positions, but it's also the orientation. Um, so we store that as something called a quaternion, but if you think about it, there's like the pitch, the heel and the yaw of the boat at any moment, um, you know, correct it for true north along with the position. And then we can also uh, add in some extra data about like the course. So like where the pings were, if you set the line, when the timer was set, um, so that, that way, we can integrate with something like Sail Nord and then you can actually show that so you don't have to interpolate where all that was. And, uh, and we're, we're excited about the, the option of adding in uh, third party sensors um, like chip company. Uh, we just think that's just gonna lead to just so much. Um, you already look at the Olympic boats and what those guys are doing and the crazy projects that they're, they're putting together just collect data about linear travel, sheet loads, um, and be able to combine that with video and like, that's just the next step. I and mean, we couldn't be more excited about it. So it's full steam ahead on that. Uh, as far as new products going, it's, um, I, I can, I can sympathize with Chuck. It's not too much I can say publicly right now, but we're always working on it. We've got some pretty big things going on at Vicaris right now. And, and hopefully we'll be able to be more public about it here in the next few months. Um, so it's, it's going to be a, a pretty interesting year, I think, um, with with some of the, the new technologies coming available. I think you know having you know this group is kind of you know what we envision as a company. Who you know we talk to a lot of different people and you know different levels, and 
you know, it allows, you know, the any level of people to be able to, you know, learn, get better, um, tie things together. And I think the diversity of being able to use multiple, you know, sources, you know, it's, you don't want one company trying to do it all because then they're going to focus. And, you know, I think it's been good that, you know, you have, you know, Vicaros and Velostec separately working on their device, which, you know, their avenues are similar, but different. And so that's, that's good. Uh, and then, you know, Sail Norge being able to kind of accept everything, which I think is huge because, you know, then they don't have to do, um, do this. Um, and, uh, um, you know, I think that's just, you know, pretty important. Um, I think, um, you know, this is exactly what we want to do is um, try to learn and, and do some things. And Sean with us is working on taking the data from the Vanguard 15s and, and being able to overlay it over video and, and then and just itself. And so I think um, Jonas has some screen sharing that he can do. Uh, which we'll let him do right now that shows the Cyclops four state data. But in obviously in reality, you can see how this data will be good for, for all these devices. So Jonas, you wanna go ahead and um, um, share that now. I think it'd be great timing. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. Uh, oh, host disabled attendee screen sharing. Might wanna Hang on. need to enable that. Let me see where I enable that. Uh, my screen sharing just has an arrow. Here we go. Does that do it? I uh, yep. I think that's gonna work. Okay. Uh, cool. Clicking on it. Let's see if it should say right. It should be able to try it again now. It says multiple participants can share. Some yeah, yeah. I think it's, it it's sharing now. Do you see it? Yep, here it comes. Yeah, it's awesome. coming. There we go. Yep. Right. Okay, so we got some some data here from uh, Malta, the Middle Sea race. Uh, so it was one of the races that they did, um, right? And you you see a map of the boat track. Comes a little more obvious if we maybe just focus on that on that upwind part here, with them uh, tacking up uh, the coastline. Uh, and what we did here is we just loaded that expedition file in that case from the boat, but they had hooked up that four stay sensor um, to the expedition system. Um, and so we're able to load it here. Um, if you, if you look at the right hand side, we've got, uh, we've got the four stay data on, on the, the bottom. And we're just showing boat speed or it could be anything else, right? This is the list of things that we get from that system and anything you want to add, you want to add uh, um, a couple more of the devices on your on your main sheet, for example, it would show up here just as, as easily. Um, so with this system, you're basically, you're going to be able to go in and interrogate that and, and focus on any part of the data, right? And it just highlights where all the tags are, so it makes it easy for you to find the part of the day that you actually want to look at. And I could, for example, go ahead and maybe I want to compare just a few of those, um, uh, just a few of those beats here up the coast. Um, I'll, I'll highlight a bunch of these, right? And we, we get some instant averages here, but we can also go into a, a more detailed view uh, of what was going on here. And as you can see, amongst other things, we get our four day averages from these periods. Right? And that's a pretty common thing when you, when you analyze boat data, it's always nice to look at an average over a certain period of time, because that gives you just a slightly more average uh, accurate number uh, if you're unsure what to do about the noise and things changing and so on. Obviously you wanna be, I guess, within the same mode of sailing for your average to make sense. So, Plenty of ways to look at that here in our system. You could have a, a table uh, of what you were doing here, um, select any column that's in the data, or you can have um, an XY plot. And in this case, uh, I guess, since we are talking about the force day, we could just com compare uh, what's the force day data. So we've got true and speed here on the X axis. 
right? And force day on the Y. How is the force day compare in these three different segments, right? And then as a coach or as a sailor, you'll instantly be able to tell, oh, you know, I remember what we did on the water. Um, was it good or not? Did it actually help us to sail faster? Um, and the process is going to look like this. You're going to load this at the end of the day. You're going to learn from this tool, hopefully, and you're going to have a number in your head to reference on the water on the next day. And that's why it's equally important to see the number on your display, obviously. Right. So that's the, that's the feedback loop and the learning loop that we're trying to close here uh, and to make that a fast one as well. So you can learn every day. Uh, and loading data uh, is going to be quite uh, quite simple. Um, so that's what you can do. Um, one other thing um, that actually sort of derives from this is uh, I started to build a little uh, performance database for this boat here that was sailing. And we only have it for that one event. But um, if you are adding data over multiple events and you apply basic bit of filtering of what you want, uh, which phases you want from that data, you're going to be able to over multiple events, see what was our best boat speed in, again, we've got true wind speed here on the, uh, on the bottom axis. Or since we're talking about force day, it's going to tell you what was your best force day setting at each wind speed and best being measured in terms of when was your, your VMG highest. Or if you're not necessarily only sailing up and downwind, I guess um, you can also say, where was my boat speed the highest, right? Can I get the top 10 percentiles of boat speed and what was the force day in each, uh, in each of these modes? So that's just a really quick way to print some target tables, maybe put it in your cockpit somewhere, and that together with seeing the data on the displays is uh, and the learning that you've had along the way is going to help you so much uh, finding the right setting and maintaining it uh, whilst you're sailing. Right? I think that's that's a pretty powerful tool. And what we like to do with the system is it's all web based, um, so collecting the data is easy. And uh, you can do this over the course of the season. You can invite all your teammates, right? And here we've got. Um, uh, Ian and Sam from Cyclops added to the boat so they can log in and see the same thing what, what I'm preparing for them. So it's just that type of modern online system and takes the data from, from all of these great devices that we get, uh, that we have out on the boats. Um, and maybe just sort of to, to give a slightly different perspective of what you can do when you have a totally different set of data is um, we've got some example here from uh, um, the World Championship, uh, the NACRAS, uh, earlier this year. Um, so we've got a bit of um, tracking data from one of the races. Uh, again, just a simple, uh, you know, four-leg race. So we've got a bunch of the boats sailing here, and I can just go in. And this is from very simple uh, trackers on the boats. That's just a track track. Uh, tracker attached to the to the boat somewhere. Right? Uh, what we did to it was we inferred the true wind direction uh, from all the maneuvers in the in the boat fleet. So that gives you something that's very useful to have is knowing where was the wind coming from to do uh, this this type of analysis. And if I now wanted to, for example, um, maybe compare how did these two get off the line and uh, compare that, it's gonna be able to use the true wind direction to g also give me a VMG gain and loss of that segment, right? And you as the coach, you can go in, you highlight the part you're interested in and, and tell, uh, show this to your sailors and um, you know, this is how you did there. And if you had a four stay sensor on both of these boats, maybe not on the NACRAS, but you know, generally speaking, uh, you'd be able to compare what was their force day respectively. And maybe that was part of the reason why they were uh, winning or losing. Um, and something that you can do even with like really the most simple set of data, um, just a uh, track record of lat and longitude. Uh, if however you add uh, course marks, 
we see some here, right? We've got the start line, uh, we've got the, the gate and the, we've got the top mark. So we can do um, reports of how did the entire fleet do? Or we picked out four boats of the fleet here. And we'll show you for each of the legs, right? How much did you lose in time to the leader? What was everybody's distance sailed? You can even show this on a, on a little map. And you can tell, did somebody win because they sailed a shorter distance or did they win because they just sailed an, an average higher speed over ground, right? And this you can do with a, if you're coaching a fleet of dinghies and it doesn't have to be super advanced. It doesn't have to be on an Olympic level. You get a mark bot or you just go with your coach boat, you ping the marks to put it in the system at the end of the day. And uh, after loading the data, right, coming off of Velocitech, for example, it's super quick and easy. Uh, you can get this ready in, let's say, five or 10 minutes on most days. And you'll be able to talk to your, to your sailors and tell them, hey, you know, this is what's going on on the water, and that's what you're going to improve tomorrow. Uh, so that's, that's what we're trying to do here. And um, coming off of this um, web-based analytics system, um, it's also just as easy. You can, you can go down here to the left and say, I want to open this uh, in North Player. Um, and I just did that here uh, and I loaded, uh, I loaded a bit of video data in this already. Never mind the fact that it's not the same boat in the video, just as a, as a demonstration, we're looking at, the, uh, at that upwind here. You see the boats, you see the live data uh, overlaid. And uh, let me actually get maybe, just to compare you, you would have maybe two boats uh, data up here and you can play through the video. Uh, you can see the live numbers and that's like literally what they would see on their display on the boat at that moment, right? So you can talk to sailors and can tell them, well, remember when you were doing like that point where you were doing 17 knots speed over ground, that was on your display, that was a really good moment. Uh, so that closes the loop again. And uh, just one other point, I guess, is visuals are really helpful uh, to keep people awake at the end of a long day. So everybody loves a nice uh, video-based debriefing. Uh, and and that's, that's an easy way to do that um, this way. And uh, it's, you have to do the data loading process once uh, and you can use it for analytics and, and video debriefing. Uh, and it's really not that, uh, not that difficult. Yeah, so that's how that works. Um, if anybody's got questions, I'm happy to jump in some other area, but I thought I'd keep it quick as a, as a really short overview um, of what you can do here. Uh, Jonas, that, that is a fantastic bit of software. Well, well, well done. Um, uh, as a sailor, I've just realized I'm already 20 years behind where I, where I thought I should be. But uh, um, a quick question, when you say you can load this data in, when, when you pump the data in, does it need someone in your company to crunch it? Or does, it, uh, does this automatically come through in this quality? No, so you're going to need a couple of things, generally speaking. You're going to need the the raw log file, whichever system that's coming from, whether it's Expedition or Velocitech. Um, I think we're seeing some of the more modern systems having some sort of cloud sync, right? So you might just download it from their cloud service or you copy it from the device to your computer. Um, you, you somehow got to get that file. Um, some of the NEMA recorders, they write to an SD card or something like that. You've got to get that file. You're going to upload it. Um, but if you go in here, right, it's just you add the files, boom, they upload. There's nothing needs to happen for that to work. Um, but then there's some metadata, if you will, uh, that's going to be required and very helpful to have. And that's for one, it's which times of the day was there actually the good stuff happening, right? It's good to keep in mind what was the start time of the race. Uh, it's better to have it recorded by a device because if they synchronize the countdown on the device anyway, in the best case, we will utilize that when you load the data, right? We do it from expedition and expedition. We get the pings of the start line as well and the countdown timer. And uh, 
I think we're working or we will work with uh, Velocitech and Atlas as well to get that from their devices. So you don't have to memorize this stuff. It's going to be in there when you load it. And you'll see, let me see, right? So here we've got an expedition file from that boat from the middle sea race. And we figured out, okay, 1150, we had a start with these coordinates and, and boom, right? That's stuff you didn't have to enter. Um, okay. But with simpler systems, simpler tracking, maybe you're going to have to enter that yourself. And it's always a bit of a, um, can be a bit of a task to just go into the data and figure out, oh, you know, this was our day. Where were we sailing? We're going to visualize what's your upwind and downwind parts. And you may have to cut out the right time, right? Is, is that the part that I'm interested in? Or am I, do I actually want to focus on a little training segment here? Uh, just make a training before the start. Maybe you did some sales testing. So you're going to look at that part before the, right? So cutting out the right times is going to be very helpful to get decent reports. And also when we do these databases of performance at the end, uh, like it's going to be better for your data if you only utilize data from actually full on racing to build your database. So these are the two things you need times and you need marks and you need the raw data, three things. Um, and uh, this is all something that you can do in the system, right? We really try to make this usable for somebody who's not a tech expert or a data analyst or something like that, right? It should be usable by everybody. And those manual inputs, are, the, the, the reason I'm asking about that is when I was looking at that full stay loading versus wind speed on the, on the blur analysis, I suspect at some point he probably changed from his J1 to his J2, and I just wasn't sure whether that's something, would that be a manual input so he'd have to do to, to sort of add that extra bit of data? Yeah, so sail usage is another thing. Uh, if, if you're interested in that, um, some tools offer ways to do that. Expedition does, and you get a, an events file out of Expedition that has your times of day and what sail did you put on. Um, K and D has a similar utility, or, um, if you, um, if you're a coach and you're on the water, you can just go in, um, we have a little live page, um, oops, we need an event here somehow. Okay. I see. But, uh, you can sort of go in and say, this is the sale we're putting up at this point in time. And you can, you can hit that and, and you can drop it later on. Um, or if you don't do that, um, you can uh, you can go in here and just in the comment box add any comments about that day, or you can go in and say, "Hey, I wanna uh, uh, actually use the entire race. Maybe uh, we use our uh, main one." And that was up throughout the entire race, and maybe the jib was only up uh, for the upwind part, I guess. We have a system here that should limit that to the upwind parts, but it didn't. Right, so these are the times that that will be uh, in the system. And just like if you keep building this, uh, well, first of all, it's going to tell you um, when you look at that race, uh, where are my tags? And at some point you drop the J1 and you put up the J2, you're going to see it here. So if you don't remember it, uh, you'll know about it. Um, but there's also going to be, um, oh, that was 2019, right? And it'll also give you just a usage database, pretty simple stuff, um, right? You had it up for 50 hours in total and you did so many tags on it. But maybe that's, I mean, it's, I guess, equally important for pros and, and not so pro sailors, uh, but I guess the pro guys change their sales more often. So um, whatever your usage number is, right? So we, uh, I know um, Sean sent you thinking about MarkSetBot and working with them. And one of the questions from one of the guys at MarkSetBot was, um, what does the CSV file need to look like so if they, if Mark Zepak gives you the data, you know, what, 
what do they need and you can email them specifically and but you need to just let us know the data that's needed from March that bot. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think we should, uh, we should get something like that going. Um, one thing that we can do here. Um, why is that? I'll show you another example. I thought we had a race here with a with an actual start line. Yeah, so here we got a race where we where we got the start line coordinates uh, from that was in the original expedition file. But you can also load something when you export marks from expedition. That's a different type of file. Uh, we can load that here. So I guess they could export to that format. It's pretty simple um, tab separated file. Um, but we're also pretty open to work with anybody else. And if they come up with their own file format, uh, we'll, we'll load it, right? It's, um, it's a simple bunch of coordinates and all we wanna do is save somebody from having to type them in by hand. Yeah, and I know with, um, you know, a lot of these instruments, obviously they, they, they ping the line and so that makes it pretty easily easy, but yeah. um, we have, you know, other situations where we have gates and, you know, I know some of the devices, you know, ping a mark when you round the gate, but if you don't round the other one, um, you know, it's not going to ping that one. Um, so it's good if we're working with an event that has mark set bot and what I've talked to them about is can we ping all the marks even not the mark set bot ones and, and, and the answer is yes. And so that way, you know, if they weren't pinged by a device, um, then you'll still have all of them dumped into the data and, and that could work well for both, you know, Velocitech and um, Bacaros because if for some reason someone isn't using Sail Norge, they can dump, you know, the mark set bot data into whatever they're using for debrief. But ideally, you yeah. know, it all works together and then it's it's a it's really all the data is there that you need, and so it'll paint the course for you as well as the instruments adding to that. So I think it's pretty valuable. That's another piece that you know I think, you know I know we're going to add to you know the whole training and in a regatta type of thing we're working on, and um, it was just a little much for us to add them since since they're. Uh, um, not as visual, but but we were we are going to have them, you know, adding to all of this to create some pretty cool stuff um, and some pretty cool training exercises you can do with the mark set bots that can be tied into, you know, all of you guys. Where you know you, you can say, okay, well the mark set bots are here, here, and here. Okay, now we're going to do a course, and you just literally can move the mark set bots, and they'll just move to wherever they need to, and so it can help with training sides of things, whether it's a dinghy or a big boat. Um, and then the idea would be, I have one mark set bot. I need training tools. I need just the tab for one mark set bot and one fixed mark. And then I need, you know, one, I need training tools for two mark set bots and two fixed marks or, you know, whatever the choice is. So you can create scenarios to go out to get the data with mark set bots are in place, instruments are getting their data, um, and then you're dumping it into Sail Norge. And so I think that's a huge lesson, you know, to be able to get all that together to do quick stuff until we can do much more, obviously, later on and dial everybody in. And that's kind of one of the biggest goals of ours is doing that so we can create these smaller formats to get very valuable data. So then we can be using them. So then when we race more, race longer, race against more people, we're ahead of the game. Absolutely. So now we just need to keep keep working. Um, we're going to do another event this weekend. Um, Sean is going to dump um, some data and work with uh, Jonas, um, you know, with the data that we do have. Um, next week, you know, we're going to have another event, so we'll have more data, and and we have two mark set bots, so that's the scenario now, um, and so. You know, it's just basically working with everyone to get all the useful information. And I think with no matter what instrument you have and what you can see, you know, I think the biggest thing if we can have like pitch and heel and, you know, as much as possible. Some boats, you know, when we get in J70s and bigger boats, some boats will have boat speed, some will just rely on GPS. You know, some will have wind, some won't. But just so all that data is there, like, in Jonas's, you know, video, 
and I think he's a hundred percent right that people, you know, you can only, you know, when you get out the water, you're tired, you know, and so to look at a bunch of digits in drawings, you know, is boring. Watching it overlaid on the video is going to keep people excited, especially if you have two boats where you can see the differences. And I think that's great, but then they can dive into the data later after a regatta or that type of thing. And so I think, you know, it just gives the best of all worlds because you can get, you can crunch a lot later, um, but you can look at the pretty pictures and see physically what you're doing while you're tired. Um, what's that mean? Oh yeah, and we're doing it for the virtual debriefs right now, which are, um, you know, what's going on now, obviously people aren't supposed to be close to each other and that makes it obviously difficult, especially because a lot of times we need to debrief inside. And so what we're doing is we're debriefing virtually, just like this. And so I think that's a huge factor right now. But I also think it's a huge learning factor because, you know, we're allowing anyone to watch the debriefs. So if you race a whatever type of boat we're working on, this week it's Vanguard 15s, but then we're going to do some J70 stuff and we want to be able to do, you know, everything, then we can debrief like this and everyone can watch in that owns that type of a boat or, you know, it doesn't even have to be that exact type. You know, you can be watching J70 debriefs and have, you know, a different boat and learn from it. So, I mean, I think that's the biggest thing. So, um, we're, um, we've gone on a fair amount, but I'm okay with anything else. If anyone wants to, um, if anyone else has a screen share they want to do, we're happy to um, allow that. If anyone has questions for anybody else, including myself, um, let's go ahead and No one else has anything. I'm just going to ask you guys all to just, you know, do a goodbye and whatever you want to do, um, sales pitch or not. Um, we'll start um, kind of backwards this time. So, Todd, you want to um, just say whatever you want as we um, get ready to sign off? Sure thing. Well, first off, thank you so much, Ed, for throwing us together. And it's great to chat with you guys and hear what everyone's been working on. I thought all the demonstrations are really impressive. Um, and just for the sailor and me, really exciting, right? That is exactly what we all want, is that ability to, to get to those answers of why did things happen? Why was I doing well? Why was I not doing well? And so I think we're all unified in that kind of mission, how to make uh, that those answers easier to come by. Um, so that's really exciting to me. Um, and yeah, great to meet you guys and look forward to talking to you more and integrating your products for, uh, further. All right, thank you. Charles? Uh, yeah, thank, thank you, Ed, for bringing us all together. Um, thanks for keeping sailing on people's minds while, uh, while we've been away in this extended off season. Um, Jonas, Chips, Todd, nice to meet you all. I uh, look forward to talking to you guys all some more. And uh, everybody stay safe and stay sane. All right, thank you. Chips? Uh, yeah, I just want to say a big thank you to you, Ed, for, for putting this together and bringing us guys uh, uh, together. It's, it's been um, an enormous learning for me seeing the capability of uh, the Sail Lord system. So, Jonas, thanks for that demonstration. Uh, from our side, you'd just like to say Sail 22 is our, is our retailer in the U.S. So if you want to get some um, load sensors to help you win some races, talk, talk to Ed. Uh, and within one month from now, we should have our uh, sports boat, Smart Tune, which is not yet available. Uh, we've got some guys in the U.S. already desperate to get their hands on them. Uh, some of the top guys in the uh, North Sales Group being part of that. So uh, uh, we're really excited about getting our sports boat um, uh, smart tune out there in the field um, back by the summer. Great. Thank you. And Jonas? Yeah, well, thanks, Ed. You know, I talk plenty, uh, but uh, we're just like the other guys. We're, we're just happy to... Uh, enhance existing uh, integrations and create new ones to make sure that whatever combination of technologies the sailor might be using, there's a really nice experience for them coming off the water and making some use of the data that, that they get. So um, yeah, I think it's going to be great. Um, nice meeting everyone. Thanks a lot, everyone. And uh, for anyone watching, feel free to shoot um, some questions our way. And uh, you know, we'll, you'll be able to watch this video again. 
And uh, thank you. And uh, we look forward to uh, <clears throat> seeing everyone on the water, hopefully sometime soon. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Cheers, up. Cheers, guys. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks,